President John Mahama has reiterated his commitments to lifting the people of the Sata Zone from poverty. Speaking at the International Trade Fair in Tamale, President Mahama assured the people of plans to boosting agriculture and improving on infrastructural development. President John Mahama was happy with the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority's Comprehensive Agriculture and Business Investment Guide. The president, who assured boosting agriculture in the zone, also says his priority is to improve on the transportation systems linking farming areas to market centers. It's more accountable, it's more transparent, and as a result of that, it is building bridges and partnerships with many of our international uh, uh, development uh, institutions. And I want to congratulate the management uh, for that. President Mahama noted a vibrant economy is directly connected to healthy people and commended SADA officials for the hard work at ensuring development in the zone. With over 8 million hectares of arable lands, the Savannah Zone could be Ghana's food basket. The many rivers and watersheds also position the Sada zone first for growing suitable lands at various locations with suitable crops categorized to match. Sada officials say it is key in getting investors to the zone. All right, now, so we're still focusing on SADA, and this afternoon I do have in the studio Adam Sule, the board chairman of SADA. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, even before we focus on the trade fair, the president has, um, over the years, and even before um, President Mahama, several presidents have tried their best to boost the SADA zone. You're the board chairman of SADA. Comparing the previous years to now, how would you describe SADA now? Well, these are very exciting times for SADA. SADA definitely has mm. gone through some difficulties in the past, and uh, it doesn't come too much as a surprise. For every startup, you are bound to face certain problems. Uh, we have had the challenge of making sure that we step back and make sure that we do the right thing. And um, that's what we are very much committed to do now, to reposition SADA to reflect on this mandate. Now, I think the last time I did have the CEO of SADA here, and he did mention that um, some measures were being put in place, which even includes the trade fair program. The trade fair has been organized. How would you describe the program, and how technically would this improve or boost the SADA zone? Yeah, by, by all standards, uh, I'm very positive that it's been very successful. Mm. Um, this was a uh, fair that lasted for a period of 10 days, and uh, within the 10 days there were very key activities. Uh, the first one was to do with um, a documentary uh, that looked at the Nagbiwa heritage, which created a lot of excitement in terms of peace building within the Sada zone. Uh, there was also the roundtable discussion on the um, agro-business um, through the support of USAID. And that also generated a lot of discussions uh, with regards to what sort of financial vehicles we should be looking at as far as the Sada Zone is concerned. Mm. Uh, we also had um, some days declared for some nationals, I mean, who participated in the trade fair. So you had the Nigeria there, you had the Togo there, the Benin there, and all that, which was quite exciting. Mm. And then we had the, um, the Sada Day itself, and then we had the Fugu Day. And mm. that was the path that the president had to come in to really mm. climax it. So yeah, looking at about 600 exhibitors, I mean, cutting mm. across, mm. I mean, the, the region, the ECOWAS mm. region, mm. I mean, that in itself was quite exciting. Mm. I'm sure I was very excited to say that Accra has moved to Tamale. Mm. But even maybe to say Ghana has moved to Tamale. Okay. And best to say that ECOWAS moved to Tamale okay. within these 10 days. Now, yes, they moved, yeah. but the issue is that if somebody is probably traveling by road, I'm getting to the benefits and the aftermath of the program because if indeed somebody from um, one of these ECOWAS regions moved in and says that, okay, I, I want to invest in this or I want to go into this business, but I have to relocate and probably coming by air, road is a difficult thing. Yeah. It's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to ensure that you make maximum benefit or you capitalize on what the progress you've made to ensure that you benefit totally from what has happened? Yeah, that requires quite a number of interventions. But let me start by saying that, well, it's got still largely to do with infrastructure. Mm. And quite a lot has been done. 
I'm sure you're aware that uh, the international airport uh, definitely will see it this year. It would happen in, within a very short time. So that in itself is going to facilitate in a certain way. Um, in terms of road, road has always been there. And uh, there is some discussions again about water transport and all that, which mm. will link Akosombo to Bupe. So in terms of infrastructure, a lot is, is, is being done. And also the other issue is some sort of partnership. I mean, to partner with locals so that you don't physically have to be here, but just some sort of through some strategic arrangement, okay. your company can still be represented in Ghana. I will hold you there and then still dwelling on sort of foreign exhibitors who took part in the international trade fair in Tamale have branded Ghana as a major investment point. Some ran out of stock and are considering establishing permanently here in Ghana. We have the story. The fair attracted 600 local and foreign exhibitors with different products and services. Eight foreign countries participated with both tangible and non-tangible products. Some of the foreigners were enthused with patronage. Malcolm Green arrived at the fair from South Africa with assorted drinks four days after the opening of the fair. South Africa and Ghana is ready and open to do business. Some of my, my colleagues brought different arts because they're from different regions of South Africa. So there's a lot of beautiful jewelry, there's a lot of beautiful art, there's a lot of wonderful pillowcases and covers. Then we have guys with engineering. They brought different engineering components for testing machines, etc., etc. Before 2 p.m. on his third day, he had almost run out of stock. So far, all the stock I brought, and, and we are only here now three days, I've sold 80% of my stock. So most probably by 1 o'clock today, I'll be sold out. So for me, the show has been excellent. And I think for a lot of our, our friends here, there's been a real positive response from the people of Ghana. He sees Ghana as a major investment point. We find that Ghana is going to be the future market for South African wines. So we are uh, positioning ourselves to look at how do we establish and develop the wine industry in Africa. But using Ghana as a hub and looking at Ghana growing out into Nigeria. So one can have a bottling plant in Accra and create jobs for, with the people, the local people of Ghana. Maud Shwaib Saifi. An Indian has never missed trade fairs in Ghana since 2008. They could not end their business experiences without the hospitality offered them in Tamale. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, we've been very well received, warmly received. There's about eight of us, a pavilion that came from South Africa. This be the beginning of a strong and bigger future. And then maybe South Africa can bring more companies to come to, to Ghana and experience business. Ahead of the next trade fair, they are already counting down months and finding out host locations. Their next finding for possible investment areas, SADA recommends the Comprehensive Agriculture and Business Investment Guide. Now, I still have the board chairman of SADA here in the studio with me. Now, were you and the CEO at the event? Yeah. I'm asking because we do have information that you and the CEO boycotted the event. Were you at the boycotted opening the event. of the event? I was there. You were there yes. at the opening ceremony. I was at the opening. And the CEO was, was also at the opening. The CEO could not make it, but I was there. Many reasons why? The CEO was occupied in a crowd. Okay. And we had to arrange it such that at least one of us would be, would be there. there. Okay. That really now, happened, yeah. so that has been cleared. We moved yeah. to, we did hear the enthusiasm these investors this share. Now, another question is that you've touched on some measures which are being put in place, specifically about infrastructure. Going forward, this has ended. What will be done to ensure that other areas are looked at, not just for this um, trade fair, which of course I'm sure would be an annual event, but what other measures or what other areas would be looked at to ensure that this is sustained well this is just one of many things that are happening i mean this is actually not the core of saddam um, you've heard about um, agriculture mm -hmm. so the key focus it's uh, it's on agriculture and i'm sure you saw the display of the agriculture investment guide which has highlighted a number of crops 
and in which areas in respect to seller that they can do well. So this is just a guide that any investor who is interested in investing in the seller zone can take and run with. Okay. Uh, we're also doing or making some efforts with regards to solar mm -hmm. because uh, there's a huge potential for solar. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a number of interventions that are going on in terms of education, health and other social interventions. This is just um, a platform, a very great platform for SADA. All right, then. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Adam Suli. He is the board chairman for SADA. And we're looking at the trade fair and other measures that are being put in place to ensure SADA um, improves and becomes a better program.